Hey friends, welcome back to the Guitar Max channel and today I'm very sad to report on what is essentially the slow death of Fernandez guitars. Fernandez is actually a brand that's been around for a very, very long time. It's a Japanese company and I've talked about Fernandez and Bernie, which is a related brand, kind of a second brand of Fernandez before in the past. In fact, my most popular video is the Bernie Sustainer uh, Les Paul type guitar. That's the This Guitar is Banned in the USA video, uh, which had to do with like trademark infringement and everything. It turned out I was wrong about that, which was in a later video. I won't get into all of that stuff right now, but the main point is that over the years, Fernandez has made some incredibly great guitars, and I'm really sad to see this company uh, go. I mean, they're they're in the process of filing for bankruptcy right now. They've already shut down their USA operations. And from what I can tell, it's not just that they're filing for bankruptcy and then they're going to restructure or something like that, but they're basically, they seem to be just completely going out of business. Now, I've got a short uh, article up here, news article that I want to uh, show you guys. And this has some of the essential information uh, about what's going on with the company right now. But then there's a couple other things I want to show you. In particular, a couple of Fernandez guitars that I think have kind of been overlooked over the years that I think have always been really, really cool. And of course, I also want to talk about the Fernandez Sustainer electronic system, which I think has gone on to influence Sustainiac and the Schecter guitars and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. So let's get right into this. But of course, guys, real quick, if you enjoy videos like this, checking out cool new guitars and staying up on all the latest news in the guitar universe, and you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, let's start with the article. Here's the headline. Fernandez Guitars Files for Bankruptcy says it's, quote, become impossible to continue doing business. This is off of guitar.com. I'll have a link for the original article down below. But let's, uh, let's read here. It starts off, Since 1969, Fernandez Guitars has slowly asserted itself as a go-to provider for budget import guitars. However, the Japanese company has announced that it has filed for bankruptcy. And I, I want to just take a quick minute here, just to interrupt this article slightly. Budget import guitars, that's such a... That's throwing shade against Fernandez. They make fantastic instruments. And you have to remember, it's a Japanese company. Uh, the Japanese manufacturing is held to an extremely high standard. A budget Japanese guitar is, number one, still fairly expensive, and number two, still really well made. So uh, I don't want anybody to get the impression uh, from that label that these are not good guitars. I've played many of them over the years, and they're amazing. But anyway, let's go on here. The company, best known for its lines of Fender and Gibson replica guitars, more on that later, and Sustainer electric guitar pickup, shared the news on the 13th of July. The company cite, quote, a considerable amount of debt to be one of the main contributing factors. The statement on its website reads, Fernandez Co. Limited is currently, uh, currently owes a considerable amount of debt to multiple creditors. And unfortunately, it has become impossible to continue business. We apologize for the inconvenience caused to creditors and related parties, but in light of the total amount of debt, Fernandez plans to file for bankruptcy proceedings as soon as possible. The statement continues. Creditors and business partners who have claims or debts against Fernandez will be contacted in writing by the attorney representing them in the bankruptcy proceedings. We apologize for the inconvenience and thank you for your patronage over the years. Okay, pretty standard. A business apology right there. But they go on with some of the details here, and there's something a little interesting here. It says, according to Tokyo Shoko Research, Fernandez Guitars owed 433 million yen as of January this year. Now, that's yen. So if we convert that into good old American dollars, it's only about $3 million. And sure, that's not a small amount of money. But when you're in the world of corporate debt, that's actually not that much money. I mean, Dean Guitars owes way more than that. They owe like 20 million or something like that. So it's kind of interesting. I don't think it's so much that they have a lot of debt. I don't think it's so much that that is the problem, but I think it's simply that the company has just not been profitable for a very long time. And that's why I say the slow death of the company. 
Because after this article, there's something else I want to show you if we kind of go back in time a little bit that I think maybe keyed some people in that the company wasn't doing well. Anyway, let's go ahead and read on the rest of the article here. It's not very long. Uh, the report, so they're, they're talking about the, the debt that the company owes. It says, the report asserts that the second-hand market has played a huge role in the debt as well as an increasingly competitive market. Fernandez, Fender, and Gibson replicas have made their way into the hands of many musicians. Green Day's Billy Joe Armstrong has proudly paraded his Fernandez Revival RST-50 on stage for years, having owned it since the tender age of 10. Now, there's two things that I, I want to stop and focus in on for a second here. It says the second-hand market has played a role, as well as an increasingly competitive market. Well, certainly in the world of budget guitars, or more affordable guitars, you know, value, high value guitars, let's say. Yes, the market is much more competitive uh, than it was maybe 10 years ago or something. If you look at all the other import brands that are out now, Eart Guitars, Firefly, Latitude, Leo James, you could even include uh, some of the other brands, you know, Sawtooth, right? I mean, they're a USA company, but the manufacturing is done in other countries. Same deal with Harley Benton. It's a German company, but the manufacturing is done in Indonesia and so forth. So, you know, if you, if you look at all of those brands, those affordable guitar brands that have been really rising up in the past 10 years, way more than there used to be, and it's more competitive, right? It's like the, the quality of the instruments is much better. The prices have stayed pretty low. So for a, an older established company like Fernandez, yeah, they're going to be feeling the heat. The other thing that's really interesting is they mentioned the second-hand market. Now, this is pretty interesting because I know the same thing is going on in the car market. Uh, the prices of used cars have gotten really, really high. And that's for a variety of reasons. I, I'm not an expert on the car market, so I can't really speak uh, with authority on that stuff. But, you know, some of it has to do with the economy overall. Some of it has to do with the prices of the new cars being really, really high. Uh, and the fact that some of the older cars, like an older guitar, if you maintain it, right, and you take care of it, it can last a very long time. But other uh, guitar people on YouTube have talked about this as well. That You know, the, the used guitar market, the prices have really, have really gone up. Although just recently, uh, I think they've kind of stabilized and maybe even starting to soften up a little bit. Um, anyway, let's go on. It's just I find it interesting, though, that all these factors have played into the downfall of Fernandez. But let's just finish up this article here. They're talking about uh, different famous musicians who have used these guitars over the years. Uh, they say Metallica's Kurt Hammett also loves himself. A Fernandez guitar, his FST-13, appeared on the cover of Metallica's uh, EP Garage Days Revisited. Uh, this is not the first time a giant, a guitar giant has had to file for bankruptcy. Of course, Gibson filed for bankruptcy in 2018. However, they had the ability to get back on their feet with the help of company restructuring and a change in leadership. Now, uh, they finish off by saying, of course, there's still time for someone to swoop in and buy the company out. The brand has its perks with its respected guitars, basses, and pickups. Fernandez has also signed licensing deals with a slew of notable artists, such as the bass player from Metallica and even Keanu Reeves, so it would certainly be a strong brand to back. Essentially, Fernandez's future is still in the balance. Well, it's nice of them to finish off the article with a little positive spin on it, but I think things have not been looking good for Fernandez for a very, very long time. Let's take a look uh, at another, uh, art. well, actually, let's look at this first. So if you go to the Fernandez Guitars website right now, uh, it says, Fernandez USA Division has closed. Please visit these other, and you can go to the, the uh, Japanese website, or you can go to Gear Street. Uh, let's see here. Gear Street, which is a, you know, the, a dealer for, uh, for Fernandez. They're selling the Fernandez Sustainer kits, which are, which are great. They even have, uh, they even have signature model uh, sustainer kits. So something that we should be clear on here is I've talked a lot in the past about these uh, guitar sustainer electronics. Not always the Fernandez units, but sometimes the Sustainiac units, which show up in the uh, all the Schecter, not all, but in a lot of the Schecter guitars. And then I also talked about the Viaz sustainer uh, products, which turned out to be 
not good. I do not recommend them anymore. I did follow-up videos on that. Uh, anyway, Fernandez was really the first one. I, I can't say that they invented it, but they were the they were the first one to really launch a mainstream product, the Sustainer Electronics uh, product like this, where it it vibrates the strings. You can get these infinite notes and everything. Really, really cool stuff, like an Ebo, but it's built into the guitar, and you can get all six strings vibrating instead of just one with a, with an Ebo. So if Fernandez, the company, is going away. I would imagine that these sustainer kits, these original Fernandez sustainer kits, are also going to go away because right now you can still buy them. But I, as you know, if Fernandez closes, they're not going to be making this stuff anymore. And as the stock runs out, I mean, that's going to be the end of it. And then you're going to be left with either the Sustainiac units, which are really good, or uh, like a, a secondary company like Via Sustainer making the Fernandez type units, but unfortunately that company has a bunch of issues. So uh, it's not just the guitars, but these sustainer units are probably going to be going away too. Now the other thing I wanted to mention is when you look at the website, it says the USA division is closed. Well that actually happened before. That happened about a month earlier. And I think when people started to see that, it's like, well that's bad. You know, that's a bad sign because obviously USA has been a, you know, a huge market. The other thing is that the, uh, I mentioned this earlier, but in that first article, they're talking about, oh, Fernandez is known for these, these uh, replicas of Fender and Gibson guitars. That's, that's really not a good way to think of the Fernandez company. Sure, o the overall design and everything, you know, it's a Strat body shape, that kind of stuff. In some cases, with the Japanese market guitars, they also used the Fender headstock the Strat Fender headstock, uh, and similar things with the Les Paul style guitars. But they're not making, you know, they were not making like one-to-one -one replicas. That's really not a good way to th think about it. In fact, the Fernandez Strat type guitars, you could get them with a sustainer unit, you could get them with, you know, Floyd Rose bridges or Kalers, you know, all kinds of stuff that you weren't going to be able to find on a Fender guitar. And the other thing is that the more original type designs that Fernandez produced, I think that was actually some of the best guitars they made. They made a really cool V called the V-Hawk, the Fernandez V-Hawk. This was sold in the USA. Um, it's kind of a weird, you know, very metal looking, kind of a blend between like an ESP Arrow and then the, uh, the old Ibanez V. That was a really cool guitar. And then Fernandez, like their full-on Super Strat that they made that was called the Revolver, that was a really cool guitar too. And same thing, you know, you could get that uh, with the sustainer uh, electronics and all that stuff. Way, way back in the day, uh, in like the late 90s actually, in my hometown I played in this band called Graceful Chaos, and we recorded an album with the guitar, like, okay, how can I explain this? The guitar player from the band Rail, which is this really cool Seattle band, like Se like hard rock Seattle band. Uh, that was the dad of the bass player in our band, and so he kind of like produced some of the recordings for us. And I got to use one of his guitars. This is a long-winded story. I got to use one of his guitars on the recordings, and he had a Fernandez Revolver, and it was awesome. It was super cool, and that was the guitar that like opened the doorway to me for, for all these other cool brands that I'd never heard of before. So here's the thing. Here's what I'm thinking about. Like I said, in the world of corporate debt, $3 million is not that much money. Now, that does not mean that someone could buy the company for $3 million. But if another brand wanted to buy the company, they, you know, it's possible, right? That they could do that and revive it, and then Fernandez becomes part of like, I mean, I guess it could become part of Fender or something, although that would be really weird. But some other company could buy Fernandez and then keep Fernandez going. Or some just random, you know, b uh, rich business person be like, hey, I want to have a guitar company. Woo, Fernandez, since 1969. It's, it's got all this history. It's got all these, you know, the, the uh, sustainable electronics, you know, cool contributions to the music scene. They could just come in and bam, buy the Fernandez company, and then, uh, I don't know, get a bunch of YouTubers to promote the new brand or something, you know, the new version of the brand, and hey, it's a big company again. Great. 
That's totally possible. And I would love to see something like that happen. I don't want Fernandez to go away completely. That would be really a waste. Uh, there's just so many, so many cool guitars. You can just go over on eBay and check out some of the stuff they have just floating around. Now, this is all used stuff I'm looking at here, but this is uh, one of the revolver models that I was talking about. 400 bucks gets shipped to you from Japan. These are super, super cool, like super strat guitars. Here's another example, like a nice quilt blue top there. Here's another one. This, this one here is one of the Japanese market ones that is actually using the, uh, the Fender headstock. But like, look at this. This is a super cool, you know, dual humbucker guitar. These are great guitars. Look at these prices. 330 with free shipping from Japan. I mean, that's, that's killer guitar right there. I hope that uh, you know somebody swoops in and saves the company, or maybe it becomes part of a, a larger company, something like that. It would really be a shame for Fernandez to go away completely. All right, guys, as usual, I'm going to have a link to the original, those articles that I was looking at. I'll have that stuff down in the video description below. I will also have links to uh, my social media and maybe a link to that uh, the Bernie Les Paul guitar with a sustainer that I reviewed uh, several years ago. Guys, thanks a ton for watching. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you very soon.